Hi, this is Ali Duran with IBM Data Science and AI team. So today I'm going to talk about how you can integrate Planning Analytics Cloud and Salesforce.com using uh, Watson Studio. Uh, in this example, I'm going to be using a Jupyter Notebook in Watson Studio. And uh, for that to work, I need a, a few things. Uh, first of all, I need to install uh, two libraries. One is simple-salesforce. This is a Salesforce uh, Python library. Uh, built on top of a Salesforce API and also TM1Py, again, another um, Python library built on top of TM1's REST API. Um, I've already installed these, but just so you can see, uh, you, if, if you come into the cell and hit run, it's going to, if you don't have these uh, two libraries installed on your environment, uh, it's going to install it for you. The okay, next thing I'm going to do uh, here is uh, I'm going to import pandas so that I can use the data frame within pandas and then I'm going to also uh, import Salesforce from the uh, new library that we have uh, imported. Now for me to be able to communicate with Salesforce I need to have some credentials and um, uh, you can set up those credentials either by yourself or your company can provide it for you. Um, if you don't, if you have Salesforce.com account, essentially you know it, this is what it looks like. If you're in within the sales organization, then you can create opportunities, tasks, and other things. If you don't have one, um, uh, the best thing to do is to go to developer.salesforce.com and then uh, create a free account for yourself. But this is essentially what I have done as well on my end, and uh, with that, I have uh, access to my uh, Salesforce. Um, uh, data sets. Now, um, for me to be able to do that, again, like I said, you need your credentials and uh, I have put in my credentials into a, a flat file so that I don't um, essentially share it with the rest of the world. Uh, so I'm going to um, uh, create a new uh, cell in here and uh, within that cell I'm going to import my usernames and uh, passwords as a data frame and uh, I'm going to just change a few things in here so I don't show my username and password i'm going to just get rid of the um the preview of the head section in here and then uh, i'll just change this one to creds so that i can um, read the file as creds okay we're going to run that one and then the next thing i we're looking at again uh, we got the username we got the password for salesforce and then um, we also need to define a sandbox so this sandbox is if you're in a developer environment like I am, it's going to be a zero. Uh, if you're in a, a production environment, then these sandboxes can change. It can be one, two, whatever uh, the Salesforce team is provided for you. So keep that in mind if you're dealing with a production environment. Uh, next is the token. Uh, this token is also provided to you by Salesforce um, in order for you to be able to make API calls. If you don't have it, now the easiest way to do that I have found is uh, if you go and hit this uh, view profile section in here and then hit settings. Uh, this is going to take you to your settings environment where you can see your personal information. But on top of that, you have also the uh, reset my security token section in here. Um, if this is your first time, you will need to come in here and uh, hit that reset security token button here. What this does is it sends you an email with a new API token that you can use for your API calls. I already have it, so I don't have to do it, but uh, again, um, this is something that you will have to do if you, this is your first time accessing it. Um, okay, so we have our um, credentials, we have our uh, sandbox, we have our token, and the final thing we need is our instance. And then for the instance, um, there are a few ways you can get it. I'm posting a link to this book as well, but. Uh, for you to be able to get it quickly and easily, the, the best way to do is, again, go into the profile button on the top right-hand corner, and then you're going to notice that uh, there's a salesforce.com uh, address provided to you by Salesforce, and that's the address that you're going to be using for your instance. Okay, let's establish that as well. Now from there, now that we know what our credentials are, we're going to pass that into a syntax so that we can use it for our calls going forward. So I'm going to just add them to my call. As you can see, I didn't get any emails as I ran that. Um, uh, if you get an error message, that means that either your credentials are not accurate or something is wrong with the way that you have put them together. Um, 
but just so we can see if they worked, I'm going to run a simple SOQL query. Okay, so the, before I run that, again, SOQL queries, they are here, um, as you can see, there's a link over here as well, Salesforce object query language. Um, you can read through this uh, at salesforce.com, but essentially they are SQL queries for the um, uh, Salesforce tables that you will be using. Uh, I'm going to run a very simple one in here. Uh, so I'm going to select ID and name from the opportunity and then only one account. Uh, as soon as I run it, you can see that there is a sample uh, Dickinson Mobile Generators account that just popped up in my list with this uh, interesting uh, JSON look and feel. Uh, I don't need this one, uh, but uh, what we can do at this point is uh, we can go ahead and go to salesforce.com and uh, create a few new accounts and opportunities in there if we want to. So I'm going to go back to salesforce.com. Uh, within salesforce.com, I'll select the opportunities section in here. As you can see, I don't see any opportunities in here, but salesforce.com creates some samples for you. So if you hit uh, instead of recently viewed to all opportunities, you can see that there's quite a few of them that they set up for you. Okay, I'll switch back to recently viewed and then I'm going to just say, okay, I'm, I want a new opportunity. I'm going to just hit new. Uh, for this opportunity, we're going to give it a name, Trout Brewing Company. Okay, and then the amount is going to be uh, $2 million. And then for the close date, I'm going to pick a date here for 23rd of August. And then this, I'll just add a stage in here for qualification. Uh, there's a 10% probability that we're going to get this is what it's basically automatically displaying in here. I'll just hit save. Now I hit save but we didn't assign any companies to this so what I really want to do is assign another company in here so I'm going to just go ahead and um, edit this and uh, select one of the companies over here. Now the trout brewing company doesn't exist here so we can create a new account. I'll just go ahead and say trout brewing company okay and I hit save here all right so we got the account saved we got the opportunity here created and then there's, there's a company associated with the now uh, this opportunity that we're working with and there's an amount a close date and all that information now um, if I go back to my original call that I made earlier uh, so basically this call was picking up the first uh, value from my opportunity list so I'm going to rerun it now it's picking up my trout brewing company because that's my first um, uh, opportunity in there and from there on now we can continue to run further um, uh, SQL queries or SOQL queries against it. Now for SOQL queries there's quite a few information out there that you can read through but uh, I found one a really useful video I posted the link over here as well uh, you can take a look at that. I based my call basically uh, using that same SQL call that I was looking at uh, by a developer on YouTube. His name is Jay. And um, I've made a few uh, quick changes in there. But what I'm essentially doing is I'm making a sales call to that opportunity table. And uh, within that opportunity table, I'm bringing certain fields. You're going to notice that one of my fields in here has an underscore C name. And that means that that's a custom name, which is something that I have created in here. When I first looked at that table, that table only had account ID for the account name. Um, and I wanted to bring the account name. So I brought it from a table for accounts and um, I created as a rule. Once you create that rule, then you get this uh, extra uh, underscore underscore C value within your um, uh, within the items or the fields that you have selected. Now I have the account name, account uh, amount, expected revenue, close date and they're all coming from the opportunity and I'm going to basically create a table with that. Okay as soon as I hit enter that call is made. I made a, a Based on the call, there's trout brewing company, $2 million amount is coming in. You also brought in the expected revenue, which is was 10% in that case. It's referring to 200,000 here. And then the close date is also brought in for that company. Okay, so I have all the information that I need. If I want more, I can bring in more from the, the fields table. Uh, I'll show you the fields table as well. 
Uh, these are the fields that you can select from the opportunity. And these are all documented in Salesforce. Um, and if you run into anything that you need, additional uh, information that you need, you can always bring them uh, from here into your SQL queries as well. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to establish my, um, uh, not only bring in some uh, utilities and services from tm one Pi, but also establish my uh, Planning Analytics Cloud um, as, um, uh, authentication. So let's bring in the, the utilities and services from tm one Pi first. And then the next thing I'm doing here is the authentication. Now, as you remember, I brought in that uh, username and password using my CSV file. Right, using upupassword.csv, up, up and then we established a, a name called uh, or uh, creds, so that I can bring in um, the usernames and password that I need. For me, the user is uh, uh, coming from this row and column, and then same in here for the password. Um, and those username and passwords are provided to you in your welcome kit. The, 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 Username and password that I'm using is called a non-interactive account. These are used for all your services accounts, such as if you're using Cognos Command Center or Cognos uh, Integration Server, in order to be able to communicate with Planning Analytics to bring in information from uh, other resources. You're potentially using the, the Welcome Kit um, uh, non-interactive account provided to you by uh, by your welcome kit. So this is essentially that account, uh, my username and uh, my password in that welcome kit. And then um, I also have to define my tenant in here. The tenant name is the company name potentially that you, you have used. Uh, in my case, the, the name that we're using here is called um, FOPMQC2, which is Financial Operational and Performance Management Quality Check to um, tenants that we have defined. Uh, within that tenant, I'm going to use the Duran TM1 server. And then within that Duran TM1 server, I have uh, only one cube called source plan and uh, about five dimensions. Uh, these are not the cube, this is not the cube or the dimensions that I need. So I'm going to create them uh, using uh, REST API calls as, as well. Okay. So let's establish our connection. Uh, again, let's take a look and see. Oh, okay, so the base URL here that I'm defining is basically it's saying uh, pick the tenant, pick the server, and this is the URL to use in order to be able to you know, establish your communication through REST API to uh, TM1. SSL is going to be always true, and the namespace is always going to be LDAP for PA Cloud. All right, so this in this phase, uh, I'm using TM1Py. Uh, TM1Py, like I said, is a library built on top of REST API by uh, an IBM business partner, Cubevice. Um, you can utilize this or you can create your own library, that's, but this is already built, so you can start <laughs> working with this. Um, uh, within this library uh, as um, and their GitHub page, you're going to see that there is going to be a lot of samples that you can utilize. And I'm essentially using one of the samples that they have provided in there to create some dimensions and cubes. Um, and uh, uh, for that, we're establishing a connection like we have done with um, salesforce.com. We're establishing a, a connection in here as TM1, uh, utilizing the credentials that we're passing over. Uh, then I'm creating uh, one, two, three, and four dimensions in here. And these are the dimensions basically are in in this um, a table that we're seeing. So we have the opportunity name, uh, account name, the amount is going to be uh, amount and expected revenue. They're going to be sitting in the uh, measures dimension and then the date that I'm creating in here. Now for this scenario, I'm going to only bring in amount, but you can also bring expected revenue if you prefer to. Okay. Um, then later on, once these dimensions are created, uh, I'm going to be uh, adding a cube uh, the cube name that I have defined is in here is called Salesforce Python, and that's what I'm going to be uh, creating on my news on my server as well. So I hit enter, and uh, if I go back to my Planning Optics Cloud, and then go hit set, uh, refresh in here on my data tab on the left hand side, and then take a look at my uh, cubes again. Now you can see that there's a new cube created in there called Salesforce Python. I'm going to add a new view in here. And I'm going to express the zeros because there's going to be a lot of these um, years and dates in the time dimension. 
Um, so it's going to be very sparse. So we don't want to uh, run into uh, trying to populate basically every zero cells uh, in the entire cube. So I'm going to bring that in. I'm going to bring these uh, dimensions to the rows and then I'll have the, the accounts in the columns or sorry, the measure in the columns. And then um, uh, once we load the data, we're going to refresh and see uh, how the data looks. Now, the next thing I will do is make sure that we're bringing in the right values again, just to make sure. So we got the name, account name, amount, and then the close date that I'm interested in, okay? Based on that information, we're going to define what we want to do. Now, we have the cube. The, the, what we want to load is the amount that I'm passing through. These are the dimensions that I'm going to be utilizing. And then based on the values that I'm bringing, uh, the, the values that I'm bringing are going to be based on the values that we have under account name in here or opportunity name in here or the values that are underneath the amount. And then with all of that information, we're basically running a call from uh, our Python environment called build cell set from pandas data frame, which is built by um, our Cubeize team. And um, so this is going to uh, write all the data in the intersection of the data set that I'm basically uh, giving into uh, the Python call that we're making today. All right, so my data, as you can see, is now completed and run. Um, and then now we can go to our PA Cloud instance. And if I refresh my data, you can see that all the data is now loaded. Um, there's all that information from 2019-329. If you, I scroll down all the way down, there's our uh, trout uh, brewing company that we have generated earlier. If I expand this a, lot, a little bit. Yeah, and then the trout brewing company for the company name, and then the two million that we have defined in there as far as our opportunity goes. That's essentially how you set up the uh, connection against uh, salesforce.com using a Python interface. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out, but I'm going to also share this document in my GitHub page. And um, thank you for watching and have a great day.